Welcome to the Mushroom Cult video series, Cloning the Wild Enoki. In this video, we will collect and isolate live tissue from a wild mushroom and using petri dishes, time-lapse video, and laboratory video, you'll be able to see the entire growth process as well as all of the laboratory procedures that are involved in cloning a wild mushroom. Here's a close-up of the mushroom specimen that we're going to look at. It is found in a low spot near Denver, Colorado, in kind of a moist area on a cottonwood stump. We're going to carefully pull away some of the bark in order to get a good grip on it, pull the noki out. So it has white gills, white spores, velvety brown stems. So this leads me to believe that it's a noki. We're waiting on genetic testing to verify that. But we'll just take that into the laboratory, put on a brand new clean blade. I have several water auger plates ready on the flow hood. So we'll just open up the container and choose the best looking mushroom. They're all looking pretty rough. They weren't picked at their prime, but I think I can pull this off anyway. It's picked maybe the largest, best one. I'm taking a dirty blade to cut off the bottom stem. These are covered with dirt and bacteria molds, so I'm trying to keep in mind aseptic technique by not touching the clean tissue on the inside, but I'm not really super concerned. These mushrooms are pretty poorly preserved, so I'm just going to take the best sample I can and put it on several dishes to see if I can win through numbers. So I'm just taking a clone from the tissue that's, that looks the freshest, farthest away from the skin and gills, to try to get a pure sample. I'm going to do this many times. So I'm also paying attention because my hands are touching the mushroom, and the mushroom's dirty, so my hands are also dirty, so I'm being very careful to open the lids. I'm also not using the flow at this point, the air filtration, because I don't want to stir up contaminants and spores and, and dust. I'm just using this out of habit. I'm taking very small samples. And this looks like maybe my last one. I'm taking a small sample and cutting it right into the auger. And that's our first step. So we'll watch these over the next few days and see how they turn out. So this time lapse is very difficult to see. If you look at the middle right plate, you might be able to notice some of the growth. Um, the mycelium is very fine and transparent and wispy. It's very difficult to see. Probably didn't even notice that. So after four days, we'll examine those plates for contamination and we'll save the best ones and move those on to nutrient media. Here I've chosen the three best samples identifying the leading edge of the mycelium so as to get as far away from contamination as possible and just doing the same thing I'm taking a small sample and putting it on a petri dish I'm doing two samples per plate because this is one of our more high-risk transfers because there's bacteria on them I'm transferring transferring them onto a new high nutrient media malt extract auger so I'm going to be flaming in between each plate Sometimes I'll cool it off in the auger plate, and so it's really hard to see. So I'm even struggling to see it with my eye, it's hard to see on the camera. So I hold it up to light and I'm going to just draw an outline so I have an idea of where to sample. Um, because when it's on the table, I can't even see the mycelium. And I'll, I'll look for contamination and kind of identify which part of the plate I want to sample from. Because uh, ideally, I would have the farthest edge of the mycelium farthest away from any contamination that's showing there and that's all I do is just take a little hashtag kind of sample pull it out and put it on a clean plate I am using the flow on the flow hood at this point because I'm not risking spores and bacteria blowing around so I'm just trying to do this as clean as possible so I'm taking two subcultures per plate and then we'll watch 
watch the time lapse of that next. Uh, it'll be a lot more visible, so you'll be able to see a four day time lapse after this procedure is done. It's important to label your plates with the date and what sample you're actually doing. So I have them all labeled separately in the video. I can cross-reference if there were any problems with contamination. I can see did I have an error in technique or was it just the sample was contaminated. So this is the last one. And I'm keeping the original culture with the later cultures. So this is the four day time lapse. You can see the water auger plates on the top. You might start to be able to see some of the mycelium growing, but you'll see them on the bottom plates. Now you can see it coming from the subculture and growing out. That's the Enoki mycelium. And surprisingly quickly, after just a few days, it's ready for a transfer. We don't want it to get too far because we want to make sure that we're getting it away from the bacteria. Here we have the first clean plate. You don't see any bacteria around the subculture. This one's also clean. And now this one, you can see the bacteria kind of tracing along the mycelium lines. This one has a small infection in the center as well. This one has a small infection. And this one has a small infection. So I'm gonna take each of those and take from the leading edge of the mycelium, kind of near the edge, and transfer that to a, a new clean plate of malt auger, malt extract auger. So I'm gonna save one of each. Just like conceptually, this is all the exact same genetics. I, I'm just trying to have multiple so that as I go down the road, if one of them contaminates, I have backups. So I am taking some from all of them, even though I did have two plates that looked like they were already clean. So I'm just taking a small sample, putting it on a clean plate, sterilizing between transfers with my blowtorch. And I like to stack the original cultures, the mother cultures, on the, the subcultures just for organization purposes. Again, I'm taking a small sample. If you watch uh, where I'm holding the handle, I'm, I'm not holding it up close to the blade. I'm trying to keep my hands far away from the opening of the petri plate. Taking another sample. to a plate, cutting it in really quickly, and now stacking the mother cultures on top of the subcultures. And the last row. Opening the lid carefully and taking a careful little sample, quickly cutting it into a place without fumbling sterilizing between cuts. We'll cool it off in a sterile plate. And I'm taking from the leading edge of where the mycelium is to be as far away from the infection as possible. And now those plates turned out good, but I just want to do a, another transfer of the best plates. This is maybe four days later. And now I'm copying these, the best ones that I found. The next step I'm going to do is, is um, make grain plates, so grain jars. So I'm going to take these plates and transfer them into sterilized grain jars. And then from then I'm going to move it on to hardwood sawdust and fruiting. That'll be in the second video. So really what I'm doing right now is just making up backup cultures so that I'll have enough to make grain jars. So that was the first installment of the Mushroom Cult series on cloning the wild enoki. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Join the